Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm coming with today's word, scripture, affirmation. I'm going to look at a few verses of scripture, a couple of different books, because we have been talking about um, prayer. Well, I have been talking about prayer, and I have been talking about um, how God wants straight devotion, how he wants us committed, walking in purity and godliness and holiness. And Jesus says, and God says, that his house is to be a house of of prayer. And so I want to look today um, at a couple of things because um, some people are told that they shouldn't keep praying about the same thing over and over because God is not deaf and he knows what we want. And, um, you know, and others will tell you, you know, something different about how to pray or how often to pray or how often to pray about different things. And I just want to go to some scripture today because I want to encourage some people that, to know, listen, you can keep praying. God is not deaf. He's not hard of hearing. He does know everything. But the thing is, is that just as Daniel prayed for 21 days fasting and praying, you know, um, the angel of the Lord, when he showed up, he let him know, look, your prayer was heard the first time that you prayed it, you know, but he let him know there was a spiritual battle going on and he was being held up, you know, in the heavenlies. And there's things going on that we don't always know about. And if we are not in prayer constantly, we can miss out on what it was that we were inquiring God about. We can begin to lose our faith. We begin to lose our focus. So when we continue to pray until something happens, continue to seek and to continue to pray without ceasing, First of all, it allows us to keep our mind stayed on God. And the word tells us in Isaiah 26 and 3 that if we keep our mind stayed on him, he'll give us perfect peace because we trust him. The other thing is that it gives us peace because we continue to focus on him instead of focusing on the issue, the problem, or how long it's taking, or is it going to happen? Does he hear my prayer? We just need to continue to be steadfast. And then we can't be afraid to pray because he instructs us to pray. He instructs us to do this. And so we're supposed to seek him. We're supposed to, you know, seek his wisdom. We're supposed to, you know, inquire of him and we can't be afraid. So the first place that I want to take us is in Deuteronomy. I'm sorry, Genesis, Genesis. Um, I want to look at chapter 18 and we're reminded of Abraham. And Abraham, you know, was known as the father of faith. Abraham, you know, uh, God had a relationship with Abraham. Uh, Abraham had a relationship with God. And so when God was going to uh, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he decided that he would talk to Abraham and tell him what he was going to do. And in verse 21, he says, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. Well, what he's talking about is that he had heard that there had been some evil, some wickedness. He was going, he said, um, because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous. He said, I'm going to go down and I'm going to check it out. But this is the thing is that Abraham began to intercede. And it tells us in verse 23, Abraham drew near and said, will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous there? And he said, are you going to destroy the whole place? If you find, if there's 50 people there, would you save the city for the 50 righteous people? And so um, the Bible tells us that God answers him and he said, well, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I'll spare all the place just for their sakes. This is in verse 26. So in verse 27, Abraham didn't give up there. He said, Abraham, you know, asked him, well, you know, um, he says, behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall lack five of the 50 righteous. Will you destroy all the city for a lack of five? And he said, if I find there 40 and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, peradventure there shall be 40 found there. And he said, I will not do it for the 40's sake. And he said unto him, oh, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak. Peradventure there shall be 30 that, that be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy for the 20's sake. And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry 
angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the ten's sake. So Abraham just kept on praying. He kept on interceding. Well, what if there's 50? What if there's 45 people? Would you spare the place for 45 righteous people? And then when God said, okay, for 40, for 45, he said, well, what about 40? Well, okay, well, what about 30? Oh, well, what about 20? And he continues and not to be afraid, but you know, ask the Lord, don't be angry. Let me just ask you this. Would you spare it for 10? And the thing is, is that we give up and we watch everything that's going on in the world. We watch all the evil. We're looking at the United States right now and all of the wicked and evilness, all the things that are going on, lifestyles and killings and murders and, and hatred and division and strife and confusion and broken homes and, you know, all types of ungodly things going on. So we know we can't be too much better than Sodom and Gomorrah. We, we, I don't see where we could be, uh, you know, any better than Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know what they could have possibly been doing there that we're not doing now in the United States. And so are we standing in the gap? Are we you know, because the wrath of God is going to come if the word of God is not going forth so that people are coming to Christ. If this nation is not going to repent, if people aren't going to begin to turn to the Lord, then the wrath of God is coming. And so what are the people of God doing? Are we standing in the gap? Are we ministering the word? But are we praying for the unsaved? Are we praying for the saved to be, you know, to, 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 to be protected? What are we doing? Are we praying without ceasing? Are we standing together? Do we care outside of us? Us in our household, you know, because Abraham is praying for people he doesn't even know. Abraham is praying for people. Yes, his nephew is there and his family, but his nephew and family don't equal 50 people. He's praying and interceding on behalf of others because he cares outside of himself. And that's what God is looking for. When you look in Deuteronomy, chapter 9, um, when we look in, and here we we see Moses, you know, Moses uh, is a man of God that we see that God had chosen, and, and he's leading the children of Israel and dealing with all of their rebellious behavior, all of their complaining and murmuring against them, and how they want to go back to Egypt, and you know, they're everything, they're just unhappy about everything, just complaining about everything, that God takes it personal because God is the one who sent Moses and Aaron, but the thing is, is that at this point, when we get to this chapter, it's after, you know, uh, Moses had been up in the mountaintop with God and he'd been there for 40 days, 40 nights. The children of Israel got, uh, you know, they got antsy. They got, you know, they, they, they got tired of waiting on them. So they told Aaron, the priest to build him a calf so they could, you know, worship. And, and, and so they were going to worship their false God. They had Aaron make them a golden calf and God was angry. But this is the part that I want to look at is where Moses intercedes for them. And he begins to tell in Deuteronomy what he had done. He's recapping. And he says in verse 17, so I took the stone tablets and threw them to the ground, smashing them before your eyes. Then as before, I threw myself down before the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. I ate no bread, drank no water because of the great sin you committed by doing what the Lord hated, provoking him to anger. I feared that the furious anger of the Lord, which turned him against you, would drive him to destroy you. But again, he listened to me. The Lord was so angry with Aaron that he wanted to destroy him too. But I prayed for Aaron and the Lord spared him. I took your sin, the calf that you made, and I melted it down in the fire and ground it in the fine dust. And I threw it in the, the dust into the stream that flows down the mountain. I'm going to stop there because the focus is that, that Moses didn't have to lay down before God and pray for them for 40 days and 40 nights, they, they sinned and they did it on purpose. You know, they had seen the miracle work of God. They had seen how God was supernaturally providing for them and all the things that he had done. And they chose to sin. And Moses could have said, well, that's what you get. And if God destroys you too bad, but that's not what he did. He laid down before the Lord and he didn't just lay down and pray. He laid down and said he didn't eat. He didn't drink. He just prayed for them, interceded. He saved their life. And that's what prayer is all about. It's about saving souls, saving lives. It's about people being delivered and healed. And we are called to pray because God's house is called the house of prayer, not the house of announcements, not the house of, of programs, not the house of making money, not the house that keeps getting bigger. It's called the house of prayer. And prayer is the thing that is done the least in the church in most cases. And that's what we're supposed to be all about. Yes, the praise. Yes, the worship. And I 
obviously the word of God has to be taught and preached so that we are equipped to do the work of the ministry. But without the prayer, nothing is lined up with God's will because we're not inquiring of him and we're not listening for his instruction or his answers or we're not seeking his wisdom. And then we're reminded in Acts chapter 12, this is the last one I'll go to, but I could go to many more. In Acts chapter 12, we're reminded of Peter when he was locked up and he was on death row. He was going to die. You know, uh, Herod was waiting to kill him. And right now he's locked up. He has guards around him. He's chained up. And, and the Bible tells us that the church was praying for him. It tells us in verse 5 of Acts chapter 12, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And as you read through this chapter, you find out that they continue to pray until the angel of the Lord came and looked loosed Peter from that prison, supernaturally loosed him from the chain, supernaturally opened up the door and, and led Peter out until Peter showed up at the house where the church was praying. And this is uh, 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 an example of showing how uh, prayer can set people free. There are people that are in bondage. Yes, we can intercede for leaders and people in the body of Christ and set them free from danger out of the enemy's hand. But also prayer can deliver people in our own family and our loved ones that are bound with addictions and habits and old mindsets and unforgiveness. You can pray and literally chains are broken. Literally, they are set free from bondage. So in all of this, we ought to see the importance of prayer. It is time for the people of God to pray. Time is at hand. God has called us to pray without ceasing. God has called us to have uh, his house as a house of prayer, not a den of thieves, not a place for programs, not to see what outfit we're going to wear, not to, you know, to, to sit up up and have planning meetings of things that men have made up. But this is a time for us to get on our knees and get on our face and pray and not to have fake fast. We've been talking about the fast. We need to look at Isaiah 58 continuously and see that God is not looking for the fast where we look sad and we look like, oh, I haven't had anything. Oh, I can't eat meat for 20 days. I can't do this for 21 days. Oh, I can't have no sweets for 30 days and trying to get the sympathy of people and the attention of others. He doesn't want that. He said it doesn't impress him because people are continuing in their sin. They're still quarreling. They're still doing their ungodly things. God is not looking for that. He's looking for holiness and godliness and those that will feed the hungry and clothe the naked. Those that will help the oppressed. Those that will reach out and be who he called us to be. That's what he tells us in Isaiah 58. And so he's looking for those that will be godly and holy and upright and those that will pray and seek his face and not just for their own selfish desires, but to stand in the gap and to intercede for the body of Christ and for unbelievers and those that are bound and those that are hurting and those that are grieving and those that have been blinded by the enemy. God is looking for some prayer warriors. And so I encourage you to look at these examples. Go back and read these chapters and go back and look and see the importance of prayer and how God said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways. He said then he would hear, he would heal and he would, he, he would heal the land. He would then hear our prayers. And, and we need to understand that the body of Christ has everything to do with what's going on in our nation, in our communities, in households, all around us. We are called that when we see things happening, that we are God's people called by his name and we're called to pray and turn from our wicked ways. Stop compromising. Stop being lukewarm. Stop being half-hearted and to rise up as soldiers on the battlefield and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I come and I ask that you would touch the hearts of the believers, the church. Father, each of us individually, all collectively. Father, that we won't get distracted and deterred, but that we will pray without ceasing and seek your face and stand in the gap, interceding one for another. Lord God, standing in the gap for those that cannot pray for themselves, don't know you, those that are broken, those that are addicted, those that are abused, those that are lost, those that are hurting. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, Lord God, that you would help us to have a heart for the body of Christ, the believers, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and to have a heart and compassion for the lost who need Christ Jesus and don't even know it, who are lost and don't even know it, who are blind and don't even know it. Father, help us to intercede. Help us to see the hearts of others. Help us to pray. Help us, Lord God, to be effective in the kingdom. We give you praise and glory and honor, Father, for who you are, all that you you've done and all that you're doing and all that you're about to do in Jesus name. Amen. I encourage you join us every day um, during the week, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. 
for prayer and word. We join up on Facebook Live or you can call the number underneath the YouTube video. If you log into Facebook Live, I'm Tony Brooke Brown. You can go to my page, um, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't so you can get updates when I upload the messages. If you want to be updated Monday through Friday and any other messages that are uploaded. Also, share this message with somebody who needs to hear it. And witness to somebody today that doesn't know Christ. Share the love of Christ with somebody. Reach out your hand and help somebody up today. Minister to them that they would want to know what must they do to be saved. I encourage you to pray without ceasing. Seek the face of the Lord. Seek him while he may be found. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. Seek him first. Seek him diligently. Seek him earnestly. Seek him continuously. God wants to hear from his people and God moves off our prayer and off of our faith. I pray that you have a blessed day in the Lord. Thank you for uh, for watching. Thank you for listening. And let's get the word in us so we can walk in the word. See you next time. God bless you.